Brandon, thanks very much for joining me. I'm here to talk about Clarissa Shields and her journey into MMA. Um, just talking around the gym, I hear the word sponge quite a lot and the attitude of being brought up. For you, what's it been like having someone of her calibre, an Olympic boxer, come in here and work with some of your MMA guys? I feel like Clarissa has, has upped our entire gym. You know, the, the attitude, the spirit, the focus that she brings has been so beneficial to everybody. You know, even John Jones is in here trying to soak it up. Uh, Clar Clarissa is great, you know, she, she has that mindset, that dedication and that self-belief, that conviction. Those are, those are things that aren't easy for a coach to teach. Those are things that people have instilled deep within them and, uh, and when, when it's really there, it radiates. So I see her upping the, the game of the coaches here and the teammates here. Everybody's very excited to have Clarissa as part of the team. I find it interesting, right, because I can imagine a, a boxer of her level I feel like you probably know this, like boxers seem to like kind of look down in MMA. I always feel that sort of shitty attitude from them. I feel like for a boxer of her level, it'd be very easy to go into an MMA gym and kind of walk in like she's the shit. But from, from the sense I get, she's very much here to learn. Absolutely. This is a humbling sport, right? No matter what discipline you come in here with, whether you're a wrestler, the striking portion will humble you. Whether you're a great grappler, that wrestling portion may humble you. Um, and same for the strikers, right? But Clarissa's come in here just with, with the best attitude. And I see yourself putting yourself in the positions to learn, right? Whether it's, it's bringing out the best coaches like Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn and Roberto Tusa, Alan Carr, or seeking out the best training partners. Like her and Holly Holm have amazing rounds where they're, they're helping each other. And, you know, the, the team has pride in Clarissa as a teammate now, too. We all want to see her succeed, so everybody's vested in her success. How does her boxing translate to MMA? You know, there, there's some elements of boxing, right, that don't transition that well so at times. Just boxing in general, not Clarissa's game specifically, but um, Clarissa has amazing boxing attributes that I think are going to carry over very well. One of them being her eyes, right? Like, she sees things coming, she has great feints, great defensive footwork and movement, and uh, incredible speed. Do you think, uh, I was talking to her about the difference in the gloves, right, and how when you have the boxing, you have the high guard, and you can sort of just block a lot of shots. Do you think until you go full speed in a fight, she'll be able to prepare for that? Or can sparring teach you the holes in the, the guard? Yeah, there's always going to be a lot of things to learn on fight night, right? And uh, I, I think she's shown an entire career in, in, in the boxing game of being able to make those adjustments and adaptations on fight night, whether those were in her Olympic fights or in a professional boxing career. So, you know, we're not going to be able to prepare her for everything. There's going to be see things she sees on fight night that she'll be able to adjust, but she's so smart. She's so smart in this, in this game, and she understands her body. She understands movement, and uh, I, I think she'll be able to make those adaptations as she continues to learn and grow in the sport of mixed martial arts. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but sometimes the MMA fan base, and indeed the community as a whole, can be rather mean-spirited and maybe some are called haters. I feel like Clarissa's got a lot of support from top-level fighters, John, Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz, Tyron Woodley. Like, these are people who don't really have to give her attention that are. What do you think it says about her reputation and, and the respect fighters are giving her for even trying this? She, she's the greatest in female boxing history. So for, for her to leave that sport to come and be a rookie in another one, to me, it's, it's so inspiring and it's also very humbling. Uh, that, that, that she would do that. And, you know, we've seen some boxers come into MMA before, James Tony and Art Jimerson, and uh, most of the time you hear the MMA fighters talking about how they want to box. So I think it's great when the boxers want to come over, and I, I think she can go down as one of the greatest female sports combatants of all time. If you could pick one male boxer to give an MMA, MMA fight a go, who would it be? Tyson Fury. Yeah. Gypsy King. What about Tyson Wilder Joshua? What about that whole mess? Oh, man. It's left a, me depressed all mess. fucking day. One day we'll see it. No, we won't. It's boxing. <laughs> no, Wilder's going to spark him out. Usyk's going to outbox Joshua now. We'll never see <laughs> the it. Devil, ah, We've been waiting for that fight for five ah, years, guys. Boxing uh, isn't dead, though. No, it's not dead. No, well, could you imagine Canelo in four-ounce gloves, though? I'd love to see it. Dude, what he Lomachenko. did to that uh, overhand feint to the uppercut was absolutely tasty. Look at me trying to sound all fucking technical. Um, no, I actually, I think the boxing whole is dead thing is just bigger boxing fights matter more because they never happen. Whereas yes. the UFC is like a machine, so you kind of get used to it and a bit numb to it. But boxing's not dead. No. It just never does what it's we want it to do. It's a great sport. Yeah. And you know what? These sports can complement each other so well, and, and Clarissa could be one of those people that help pave the way, you know? Yeah, look at you tying it back into it. <laughs> <laughs> Clarissa how, Shields. Yeah, how's, uh, how's your boy doing? How's John Jones? Uh, he's awesome, man. How's we, uh, we're, you want to talk about another champion that is very goal-driven and, and has their eyes on something bigger? It's John Jones. He wants to be the heavyweight champion. Literally bigger. How much is he weighing these days? Do we know? Uh, yeah. Ballpark figure? I, I'm not looking over his shoulder. <laughs> you couldn't 
You think he's too tall? <laughs> no, but he's, uh, I'll tell you what, he is, is applying this strength that he has put on over the past year. Yeah, I, the, the old criticism of John has obviously been like no punching, like no real punching power, one punch, uh, one punch knockout power. But, uh, you know, everyone can look good in the pads, but I saw him throwing a few uppercuts the other day that looked like they had real heat into it. Have you felt the difference? Sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, John, John's put plenty of big guys down too, you know. He, I, I think DC wasn't conscious when that fight wrapped up, neither was Guffs of Sin. You know, there's, John's powerful. He's very powerful and don't let that, uh, lack of the one punch power to deceive you because he, he will put somebody down and uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does at heavyweight with that but I think John's greatest attributes are his volume, his creativity, his, his high versatility of strikes and that's something we don't see often at heavyweight. Is him versus Ngani one of those legacy fights that kind of just needs to be made? Absolutely. I want, we want to see John as heavyweight champion before he's done with this game. Is there a fear that that won't happen because of politics? I'm not asking you to get into the politics, but you think it'll come together eventually? It'll come together. Cool. John's 33, we, we have a lot of time, and, and the more he gets to, to work on applying this strength, you know, and, and, and making sure his body's firing and, and having that same volume we had at 205 now at heavyweight, um, is just that much more dangerous for the entire heavyweight division. There's always been this thing about John where he likes to beat the guys at their own game. So are you training him to stand up and just windmill in and knock out and Yeah, yeah, him? alternate hooks from the waist is what we're really looking for, chin up. Cool. Shit talking with Francis <laughs> Ngani, how dare you? He's a lovely guy. Hey, you know, Francis' technique is getting better and better as well. Like the, the work he's doing with Eric Nixick yeah. at Extreme Couture is showing. So um, we, we want the best Nagano ever. Yeah. And we're going to see the best Jones ever when the time comes. Cool. By the end of this year? I hope so. Thank you very much for joining me. Yeah.